Hi, this is Liz from Low House Canada. This is the quality over quantity mask. So there is a need for quantity masks, but there's also a need for quality masks, masks that can be washed over and over again. So come along for this journey. So this is the mask we're gonna be making today. It has a nose piece and also the ties on each side so they can be used over again instead of elastic because we wanna make sure that if it breaks, then we can you just use some replacement tie. There's also a nose so you can put something in there and it's removable so then you're able to clamp it along your nose having a secure fit. Now on the other side we do have the filter that you can put in. Some people are recommending vacuum bags and HEPA filters but really have a look at the manufacturer because a lot of times you're not supposed to breathe in that stuff. It's not supposed to be directly to your mouth so really be cautious of what you're putting in as your filter. So this is what the mask looks like on. It comes all the way down, so if someone's coughing or you're coughing, then it actually stays protected. So this is the one I made previously, my very first one. It has the nose wire sewn right in. It also does have the elastics on the side as well. The elastics will deteriorate and depending on how it is cleaned, some of them will break down faster, say if it's like an autoclave that some of the hospitals use. For this pattern, I thought maybe doing a pocket in the middle might be a little bit better, but I found out that you really need to do a big overlap and it's just not as secure as doing it from the bottom or from the side. So when I put this on, it does go over my ears. It does really make a difference on the sides of the elastic though. I find there's just so many gaping holes on the side as well and then at the bottom there is quite a bit of stretch at the bottom so it's not really going to keep you safe if you start coughing. So the mask I'm going to show you today is actually two patterns put together. So if you haven't checked out pinsandneedles.com, they're a wonderful organization down in the States and they've been making disposable masks, cloth masks, and been commissioned by the hospital to do that. They have a Facebook page where there's a ton of different other sewers in there that are on the front lines making all these masks for people. So have a look at that. The other one is Aries face mask pattern. So this one's by another lady and these are just wonderful sewers. So these sewers who put these patterns together are amazing because they were doing it under a time crunch. And a lot of these places where they need the mask the most are in desperate need. So for this mask, I put this piece from Pins and Needles there and then on top of it to get the neck to go longer, I ended up placing it over top there. So we're getting the length for the ears to go around to the side and then we're also getting the length from the neck down. So I'm not creating a pattern for you because you really need to check out those SOAS websites because those are their patterns, they're not my patterns, and they spent many hours trying to figure this out. So I'm still using the B piece from Pins and Needles for the inside of the mask, so you'll need two of those. So let's talk about fabric. So a lot of people are suggesting different things for fabric. The one I've seen the most is to get quilters cotton or premium cotton because the weave is so tight. So you wanna have two layers for that. Some people do suggest four layers. It just really depends. I even find with two layers, it is getting really hot to breathe. But if you need four layers to feel extra protected or to have an extra filter in, you can do that too. I see some people recommending fleece, cotton fleece, though that isn't great to breathe in because it does have those pilling fibers and if it doesn't have pilling fibers then it probably is mixed with some sort of with polyester and you don't want to be breathing in plastic for that. So with your cotton you make sure you pre-wash it with hot water and in the dryer because that's what you're going to be doing a lot of the time to sanitize your own mask so you want to make sure that it's already shrunk. It can shrink quite a bit if you don't do that already so it's a really crucial step. So it's really important for your fabric to have two different colors so on the front you're going to have one side a different color than the back. So that's been really emphasized that they need to be two different colors if you're donating them. If it's for your own personal use we don't care. 
So you want to put the right sides of your fabric together. You're going to do two layers to cut this out and you would just want to have a look and see where your fabric stretches and depending if you want it to stretch across your face or you want it to stretch more up and down depending on if you're donating them or if they're your own personal use, you can customize it. So for the front and back pieces, you're going to be cutting out two pieces each and they do not have to be on the fold line. So once they're cut out with the right sides together, you should have two pieces of each, two pieces of your front, and then two pieces of your back. So the very top there, it's going to be the top of your mask. That's going to be your bottom, and that's going to be your inside of your mask. You're going to have two pieces of each. So let's talk about a couple options. You have an option to serge it. So if you have a serger that goes by so much quicker, the curves on it are so much faster. If you don't have a serger and you just have a sewing machine, that's fine. We're just going to sew along here on either side. So the top and the bottom. So you're going to do exactly the same if you have a serger. So the width really depends on if you have a serger or not. So you want to make sure you zigzag your edges. So if you're going to do that, you can zigzag your edges first and do that along there. And then that will determine how far out you need to be. If your machine can do it, zigzag your edges because then they won't fray as much. You can also straight stitch it and that's what I've done here. It isn't going to last as long because obviously cotton does fray. So we're just going to open this up now. You don't have to press it at this point because we're just going to be doing a stitch around the top. So you're going to take your front piece and your back piece and place them right sides together. And what I do is line up the seam. You can pin this if you want to and try to pin it within your seam line so you're not puncturing in extra holes. I just usually hold them and sew. So you want to sew down at the top and sew down the other way. If you have a serger, you're just going to do that too. Serge around the top or zigzag around the top. It really depends. So if you are having a problem with the curves, do a straight stitch before and then you can zigzag your edges. We'll make it a lot easier. And if you need to unpick. So what you're going to do is just flip it right sides out now and so the wrong sides are in together and we're just going to give that a press. So where these fold lines meet at the top, we just want to put them out and so that's going to be the top part of your mask and then you're just going to press that with a iron. And this is a really good time if you have a tailor's ham just to put them on there, give them a good press. It just it makes it so much easier. And if you're doing a lot of them, you can just mainstream it this way. So you got a couple options now. What you can do is serge all the edges so that they don't fray. Or if you don't have that, what you're going to do is with your iron, you're just going to fold over the edges and you're just going to press them down. All the edges will be contained inside. All right, so the only part that you really want to make sure that you do a double fold and actually stitch down before you stitch your mask to together is this bottom edge. So that's the top part of your mask. This is the bottom. Because if you don't, it'll flip over and it will show on the other side when you start washing them. And so you just want to keep that tucked down and it won't fray. It's also going to be next to your mouth, so you don't want like a mouthful of frayed cotton. So here you go, you're going to press that once and then you press it again. So you give it a sew down and that is done. So what we're going to do is start sewing the mask together. So with the bottom edge, we're just going to flip that up and with those in seams you want to make sure that they are laying flat you can fudge kind of how much you want to put inside depending on the size of your mask you can put your mask on at this point as well and see how much you want to take in so you just have everything laying flat I try to put my seams down so that they match up and just put it over top so there is some overlap on the side, so I would just put my fabric in a little bit more on that side. And what we're going to be doing is stitching down the side. So we're not stitching across, we're going to be stitching one side and then the other so you're able to put in the filter. So to clean these, all I've seen is people putting them in the washer and dryer on hot water. 
So I have seen some people saying that they're using their microwave to sterilize it. It's totally not recommended, especially if you put in a metal piece because that will, it's metal in your microwave. Also, if you have an elastic, it'll melt the elastic. Also, if your fabric has some sort of sparkle on it or it has something that you don't actually know, it can also set off your microwave. So we're just gonna be sewing up the sides. So you really wanna make sure you check on your face. So if you want it closer to your ear, then you would take it further out. If it's too close to your ear, then you're gonna stitch it more toward the middle. So you're just gonna have to try it on. If you're donating them, I would recommend doing it further away just so that you don't know what type of face that they have. So now I've seen that the military are requesting masks to be made because they have to wear them, but they have to be a certain color. So they can't be any sort of print. They have to be a solid color and it's just depending, I think, on where they are. So have a look in your area and start researching that before you make masks to donate to your local area. So all right, so we just top stitched this down. Make sure you go front and back with the top stitching so it locks it into place. Now And now we have our holes for our ties. So the reason why the ties I find are much better is because then if the elastic breaks and there's no loops on the side, that's it. They'll have to get some other elastic or figure out how to sew it in and they just might discard the mask. So we're gonna be sewing in the nose piece pocket that's external so that the wire can be removed at any time for washing. So for this, I cut the corresponding fabric with 2.5 by four inches. So what you're gonna do is just fold it over on either side. So I fold the edges down, give it a little steam. It's basically making bias tape if you've ever done this. So what I like to do is just clip my corners just so that it folds in a little bit easier. Once I've clipped my corners, then I fold it and then give it a bit more steam to set it in place. So you're just gonna fold it over like this and then give it a little press. So now I top stitch this down so that it stays into place before I put it on the mask. So we're just gonna put it at the top part of the mask. I usually put the stitching at the bottom, but it's up to you. I fold it in half to meet that seam and then put it on there and stitch it down. I wouldn't pin it necessarily. You don't wanna be poking more holes in than you normally do, but if you need to, you can put a clip on it and to hold it down. But uh, I find you can just hold it down pretty easily and kind of pivot to secure it in place. All right, so it's all done. The mask is made. Here's some recommendations that people use for the nose wire. You can get round head fasteners, so you can find these at your house or you can buy them and those just slide in and you can take those out. They are a little bit longer, so what you can do is just curl it in with the pliers and they come out pretty easily. Another one is people are using twist ties. They just put that together, three or four together, t twist tie them together, and then put it in, kind of curl your edges. Another recommendation, if you have things around your house, you can use these. These are for like duotangs. I wouldn't recommend using the center of them. They're just so flimsy, but the edges you can definitely use and snip those off. So there's lots of different suggestions and you can have a look and see there's lots more suggestions that, that people are using floral wire you can get really crafty with what you're putting in there for yourself just for reference those ones are four inches long or 10 centimeters so we're going to be making some bias tape if you want to make your own strap. So this idea I saw from the wonderful ladies on different sewing groups that I'm a part of and this is what they recommended. Just putting a pin on through some material and then you're just going to slide it through. And it just makes wonderful bias tape. It's so, so easy. No turning, no doing any loop turners or anything. You want to do it this way. 
So once you figure it out, you're just gonna fold over the two edges, put it down in between the pin, and then it's really simple. We got the iron on one side, and then we got the bias tape that we're putting on the other side. It's a little bit tricky doing it one-handed, but it just slides right through, and you do it a lot quicker when you got both hands. Again, you can cut the corners again to make it a little bit easier, just to give it a finishing edge. And you have a triangle, fold them down, and then fold them together. And then what I do is put it through the pin again. So I don't change my pin with the mount and I just put it through, put my iron on it again, and then you're just gonna feed it through. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments or any sort of adjustments that you're making, please put it in the comment below so we can all learn from each other. It seems like every day there's new information about the mask, so being able to share that down below and also with your friends and family and being able to make your own mask. So I'm really glad I was able to share this with you and I hope you guys have a great day and let me know anything about the mask down or any questions down in the comments below. Alright, I will talk to you later. Bye!